Welcome to the Stereo Ladies Podcast, the sister brand of Subtle Asian Real Estate, where our mission is to get more people that look like us participating in the real estate industry. We invite experts to not just talk about real estate, but also about our unique identity as Asian women and the cultural values that shape who we are as investors. I'm Anita Wong. And I'm Tiffany Lee. We're both real estate agents and investors based in the Bay Area and New York City. Whether you're a seasoned real estate pro or just starting out, there's something for everyone here. So pour yourself a glass of wine or boba tea and join us as we celebrate the achievements and unleash the untapped potential of AAPI women in the real estate industry. Welcome to the Sarah Ladies Podcast. Now let's get on with the show. But first, a word from one of our fabulous sponsors. Hey, Sarah ladies, listeners, Tony the CPA dude here, also your resident Sarah Tax Bro. And with your lovely host, uh, they came up with some great ideas. So Miss Tiffany and Miss Anita here have came up with the tax workout plan. So we're gonna help you get cut up on your taxes, also we're gonna help you cut up on your own body. So just like working out, taxes is a monthly thing. Um, you can't ignore it, otherwise you're gonna fall off the cliff. So with the code Sarah ladies, we're gonna give you a nice healthy discount and we're also gonna give the Sarah ladies a kickback just to help support their podcast. I've had a fun time being on their podcast a couple times this year. Uh, they've done great. I really wanna see them blow up in 2023. So with your support, with this creative tax workout plan and also a workout plan in general, we're gonna help you transform your life in 2023. So mention the code Sarah ladies when you talk to me, you can email me at Tony at the CPA dude, um, text me at 928CPA dude, TikTok's the CPA dude, website's the CPA dude.com. Everything's the CPA dude. So Sarah Ladies is your special code here and let's make this year great. Now on to the show. Hey, Pod Squatters. Welcome to the Sarah Ladies podcast. This is your host, Anita Wong and Tiffany Lee. It's January 2023 and I know where we're all standing right now. It's January, you have new goals, new business plans. Maybe you started that new keto diet. You're fired up and you're ready to go. But did you know that a new study suggests that it takes just 32 days for an average person to break their to break their New Year's resolutions? So today we're going to be talking goals, new habits, how to stick to them, especially those real estate ones. And today we have Tracy Trung, who is a sales account executive at Slack and taking the real estate world by storm. Just in 2021, Tracy went from zero to six properties within seven months with a variety of short-term and long-term rentals in multiple geographic markets. So this girl is flying all around the country. Um, then she started this empire. She started and built it out herself. Tracy is also an avid world explorer and fitness buff. And the kicker, Tracy built her entire real estate empire still working remotely at her W-2 at Slack, while her husband, who's a police officer, supported her ambitions from home. So if you're just getting started, this is the episode for you, because today we're going to talk about goal setting, habits, and having the right supportive network to realize your dreams. Welcome, Tracy. Anita, Tiffany, Pod Squatters, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored, excited to be here. Yeah, we're, excited we're excited to have you. Um, okay. So yeah, tell us about who you are and a bit about your real estate journey. Yeah, so I mean, for those who are listening um, and who are immigrants, I have a very similar story. I grew up in a household with some of the most hardworking parents you could ever ask for, just working to ensure my sisters and I have a great opportunity um, in life. And so after graduating from UCLA, um, I started, I found my way into tech sales and by the age of 25, became a regional manager for a tech startup. And then from there pivoted more to like a field sales account, account executive role where I got to do really fun and cool things. Like I flew to companies like Disney, Lululemon, helped them with their mobile strategies. And right now I'm, I'm at Slack uh, in a very similar role and helping these enterprise companies to really build out their digital headquarter within the platform. Um, my real estate journey actually started when I purchased my first home. Um, it was funny because I still remember unpacking that first box, I mean, sorry, that last box. And I just sat there and I was like, wait, is this it? Like, I feel like I'm in that American dream that my parents have always <laughs> described. 
And at this point, I'm like, I'm 28 and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, there's no way my life is just like, I've met the goal. Like it, like something doesn't add up. And for some strange reason, so I saw Robert Kiyosaki's ad like five years ago and I've always dismissed it. But for some reason, like in that moment, that ad just popped up in my head and I was like, you know, I'm just going to go Google this guy and I'm going to see what this was all about. I don't know why I suddenly just thought about him when I had this moment of like, is this it? Is this the American dream? So I bought his ebook, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the Purple Bible, as we know it read all of that in one night and i just suddenly felt like someone who was like at the top of their summit you know here's my career love and life moved into my first home with my husband to now feeling like the bottom of the summit of like i have so much more to do and everything that has been taught to me i just realized is just the complete opposite of what i want to do with my life and that just really ignited everything and started that real estate investment journey you said something really interesting, Tracy. So I just want to, you know, expand on that. What were some of the misconceptions that you see now, um, when, when from your upbringing, that is in not in confluence with where you want to go with your future? Yeah, I think, and you know, not speaking for everyone, and you know, with an Asian background, but just in my upbringing and in the Asian culture, you know, I've always grown up to hear, you know, you go to college, get a job buy a house and you're good, you're comfortable and that is the life. And when I hit those milestones, like each and every one of them felt great and I'm so grateful for the path towards it. But when I finished buying that first home or that house that my parents has always described as like, that is like the, the promised land, something just didn't really feel right because I feel like I still had a whole life ahead of me. And it just didn't align to everything that I knew I was still capable of fulfilling and achieving. And there was just still like that hole. Yeah. You know what's so funny? I, I feel like you're an Asian overachiever. I mean, reading your bio, <laughs> yeah, you are an Asian, the, the, the textbook Asian <laughs> overachiever. And so you're, you got there so fast, like you're so young, you're like, uh, what's next? Um, <laughs> But was that kind of your background, like in high school, college, were you like straight A student? Oh, absolutely not. So um, <laughs> I'm the third child in my family, okay, the forgotten one. So growing up, like my <laughs> sisters were the overachievers when they got to my grades. My mom was like, well, you got satisfactory in the getting along with people. <laughs> um, so, so, so what you're saying is you're an A minus student? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. I'm not even an A minus girl. I'm like... C's, B's on my good days. I actually fell asleep on my final exam in, in high school. And at graduation, this was senior year, at graduation, my my uh, teacher was like, hey, so I saw you fell asleep in the final exam. Like, I know you're a senior and all, but <laughs> at least I don't care. <laughs> so that's so funny, right? Because that's, so as a kid, you kind of like just didn't care about the academia. So when do you, when did that switch for you? Do you think when you got a job, when you got your W-2, you're like, okay, now I'm ready to, you know, just level up and, you know, repivot that whole C student story? You know, I think, I think so. I think the pivotal moment for me was it's like, I think after I got that first paycheck was when I realized where it's like, okay, like, even though it wasn't significant, it was okay. Like, I need to put effort into something that I want. And that's something that I want is I want to travel. Like I want to not worry about, you know, I need to pay gas and here's my last paycheck and I can barely afford it. So that really set me on this path. Like, okay, so the harder I work, the more I will earn. So, but that is still that track of like what we heard throughout our life, kind of leading up to college and getting a job. But after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad and just getting into like the real estate mindset, that completely pivoted. It's like, yes, the harder you work, the more you will earn and the more that you'll achieve. But also there's this concept of like work smart, not hard. So how do you be, be how do you be strategic about it? And how do you partners with others and put yourself in front of others where you can grow and learn together to get there? That's awesome. And that segues into our next official question. So when you started, <laughs> how did you create your plan and how did you set forth on achieving it? 
Yeah. So when I started, like I knew absolutely nothing about real estate investing. So the first step was always education. Um, I basically went ape on like a whiteboard that I had in my office space. And I just wrote down every single question that I had at that very moment. I was like, how do you become a real estate investor? Where do you invest in? What are the best markets? How do I protect my assets? How do I protect my ass period? And then once I have all those questions out, I started to research books, web, uh, web webinars, podcasts, virtual meetups. This was during the peak of the pandemic. So meeting in person wasn't a thing. And I just put myself in front of those resources that could help me find the answers or help me to get the answers that I needed. And then the second step was, you know, at the end of the day, especially for newer real estate investors, I still consider myself pretty new. Is that like you can read and attend webinars and listen to podcasts all you want, but if you don't align action, nothing will move, nothing will happen. So from there, I started to align daily habits which is analyzing at least seven properties a day. And I flew myself out to Ohio, which was my first out of state market and spent three days there just driving every street and corner that I was interested in investing for the neighborhoods. And then the third step is just trusting yourself and trusting your learning and start putting in offers and making it a reality. I love that learning by doing you're like a tactical learner. So I, I remember um, when we were reading off your bio, you're a big fitness buff, right? Do you think that has influenced your, uh, you know, your mental fortitude and in going into this? I, I definitely think so. Um, in my mind, one of the hardest thing for me is how do you push your body and challenge yourself mentally? And how do you do it at a time that works best for you? And for me, in my mind, I think like working out is even harder than real estate investing or learning about it because then it's like you need to get physical with it. And it's also like a mental block that sometimes you need to like get over if you're on like your rap, like your last rep or your last set. So I strategically set my workout routine to be the first thing that I do when I wake up every single day, because when I conquer that hardest thing in my mind, first thing, everything else that follow is easy. And then you get those endorphins too. So you're like super pumped and energized to take on the day. Yeah, like exactly. Natural energy. You know, you don't need coffee for that. You just, you just do some push-ups, do the workout, get that pump out and that mind pump too. It's, so do it's you, definitely changing. Yeah. Do you do mostly weightlifting or calisthenics? What's your, uh, what's your routine? You look great by the way. So all the <laughs> ladies want to know what's your Just workout regimen in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you're, you're so sweet. I love, I love mixing it up. Um, lately I've been doing a lot of strength training. So a lot of dumbbells and barbell strength training. Um, it's definitely like a good mix of Pilates in there. I cannot do yoga like I just can't. And I think a part of that is I just need to do a better job of like learning how to meditate and like slow down a little bit in my mind. So that's something that I'm still working on. Um, but it's a good mix of, um, you know, CrossFit, strength training, Pilates, uh, walking whenever I can, standing whenever I can and just being active like your body is one of your biggest assets, like take care of it. I love that because I almost see a direct parallel to your workout routine and how you're kind of structuring your real estate portfolio because it's so diverse. But you have mm -hmm. midterm rentals, you have short term rentals, you have long term rentals, and you're in all these different markets too. So, is it, do you think that that's like that talks to each other in a way where you're like, I need to be doing something different just to mix it up? I definitely do. And I think so if you're kind of relating it to, like working out in real estate, it's, I know in real estate, a lot of times we hear like, Hey, like focus on one thing, like what's your niche and be absolutely great at it. I 100% agree. But also it goes back to diversifying your portfolio, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And I think when you venture out into different path, not only are you learning, like, how do you manage a short term rental, but also what's the difference between that and a midterm rental. And in my mind, it's like, you're never going to kick yourself in the ass because you read too many books and you just absorb so much knowledge and information, right? So it's kind of like the same concept of, yeah. even though I may not pursue, let's just say self public storage in the future, I have enough knowledge or I believe I acquired enough knowledge to make a sound decision if I ever decide to be a part of syndication for one. 
um, very similar to just working out, right? Um, your body over time and your muscles over time adapts to the weight that you continue to lift and train with. You need to push it, you need to challenge it. And once you challenge it, that muscle stretches and it gives you more room to actually grow and enhance it. Um, so that's just kind of where that thought process is. It's just like continue to challenge yourself and be in that uncomfortable stage. Yeah, because you can hit plateaus in both things or you can hit a fitness mm -hmm. plateau. And I feel like you felt like you had hit a work and, and you know, just mentally hit a plateau of like, what am I doing? This is this is boring to me. This workout is boring to me now. This making money thing is boring to me now. It's just a W2. I need to, I want to mix it up and diversify and go to the next thing. So that's why I, I really like that connection. And I saw it when, as you were talking about, you know, plateauing, hitting your goals and having fitness top of mind. So that that is awesome. Anita, how do you feel? You, you like it? You're ready to move on to the next question because <laughs> i do this all the time i have like three, three more bonus questions well, i love it, I love it as well. and i'm like oh my god it's so true though and it's like you have to always keep yourself stretching and there's not really a point where you can say like i'm like like are you ready like to to make um like because in real estate i kind of feel like you don't know what you don't know right you're gonna you, you learn the books like whatever but the books don't say anything about what it's actually like even even for all the syndication books they know how to like they tell even all the gurus that are all telling you how to get your first deal but what about managing those deals what about like when you're like when like ton, like your tenant like burns down like 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 three surrounding apartments you know like or like things like that right you don't really know until you actually get into the area to to um to get there and i love that you just kind of just force yourself in there. Just, just challenge yourself. Be free to fail. Be free to learn, and then carry that on to your next deal or your next lesson. Right? Yeah. Oh anyway. Anita, oh wait, wait. Before we move on to the next question, Anita said something interesting. So here's another connection that I just realized between uh -oh. fitness and real estate. <laughs> you have to stay flexible and agile. So with with exercising you really need to listen to your body like if something hurts like so don't don't hurt yourself right or if something feels bored like you really need to be in tune with your body and similarly in real estate you really need to listen to the marketplace and adjust accordingly adjust your strategy accordingly so having that flexibility and mindset and really listening to what's and being very aware of what's going on and how everything plays together i think is another you know fitness real estate thing and i think the segues into that other thing that we're working on that other initiative anita that you yes, came out with the workout up. plan we have a we have a sierra ladies uh real estate ish workout plan in the works Ooh. with all these different <laughs> uh yeah for 2023 in line with your goal setting thing so this is the perfect first episode for yeah. 2023 so, Tracy. it might be already out by now but by the time this this episode <laughs> airs but we'll let you know but yeah i totally agree with like what tiffany said about like you know like just being in tune with like who you are like what your body is yeah. telling you even not just like like not just like you know on on the market but also like about who you partner with whether a deal's good right it's like if you have those tingling feelings like this seems like this seems like too good to be true or these numbers don't align this is bullshit like that's the thing that you're training i don't i mean i i, I kind of feel like you're just training your bullshit meter <laughs> like yeah, like, yeah. your bullshit meter muscle it's just yeah the more like deals you're under right now you're like more and more deals. you're just training your yeah. own bullshit meter it's like that's not that's not the numbers i've been getting these are the ones that i have and it's like that is your like day by day strength training you know so Absolutely. yeah Absolutely. and with strength training you got to practice your form too so with every deal your form like improves but having good form is the fundamental of lifting and then you add more weight. So I think systemizing too, and the form yeah. goes into the systems. Oh my God, I can go on about this all day. We need to move <laughs> yes. on to the next question. I'm gonna no, do this I all day. Can I, can I so add one more thing? Yeah. Okay. Tracy, add one more thing, go. Can I just add, add one more thing, especially for those who are like newer in real estate investing? Um, FOMO is real. And I'm gonna make that connection to like recovery days and workouts where it goes back to what Anita said, where it's like, hey, and also Tiffany, like listen to your body when you're working out on like recovery days where it's like, it's okay to sit out. Sometimes when you're still learning, it is okay to take a break within your week to maybe 
not attend a virtual meetup because you're just socially burnt out or it's okay to not make an offer today just because a group of your 10 other investor friends are doing it listen to what is okay and what feels right for you and based on your gut and judgment like go with it don't ever make an offer or do whatever it is based on fomo so i'm just oh gonna put that there i love that <laughs> tracy one more thing that's like if you fall off your diet plan right <laughs> you yeah. can you can fix it just get back on the wagon the next day like you're fine you're allowed to like take a break have a cheat yes. day mess up but like it's yeah. If you need to have more good days than bad, you're allowed to have bad days, but you need to have those a larger majority of good days, right? And that Absolutely. goes back to working out too. So be disciplined, but also give yourself some grace and be kind to yourself. Nothing is perfect. Beautiful. So next I, question, I like we did it. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna skip to the last question. I I know what may well, maybe we'll come back around because I want to get this question out first <laughs> before um before we head on to I don't want to run out of time. But um, can you tell us about your relationship with your husband, marriage, and the conversation you both had when you set off to build your real estate empire? yeah um thank you for asking this this is definitely a big part of i think where i am today i think like mentally with real estate investing um so i'm so grateful for my husband lawrence uh the best thing about lawrence is that he's 500 supportive anytime i want to do something he's like yeah let's do it but the bad thing about lawrence is even if it's a bad idea he's like yeah let's 100 percent do it um i love it but <laughs> ride or die lawrence is a ride or die that's yeah. right i know right <laughs> and sometimes i'm like i don't know if it's a good idea but sure <laughs> um but i think like if you're if i'm tying it back to like the conversation that i had with him for real estate investing and just for me personally to eventually go all in it wasn't important for me to get support from him to do it because regardless i'm gonna do it anyways i think what was more important was getting him to understand why i wanted to do it for us and the reason why that was so important for me to get it was because his goals decisions and his mindset would make it very difficult for me to be in an environment where i can be fueled and inspired by my partner if it just didn't align and like for me personally especially in a marriage um at this point we're married we're one year into our marriage so at this point for me it's kind of like i want to be around someone who and also to throw on top of that we're in a pandemic right i like i see him every single freaking day and so it's like i need to be in an environment where my partner inspires me and like he turns me on physically but also mentally i think like for me 90 percent of being attracted to my partner is the way that we connect mentally and emotionally and if real estate investing is 90 percent of my passion and it's fueling me to get up every single morning if my partner doesn't understand why i'm doing it that makes it very difficult for me to want to be around him to be affectionate with him so i think you know getting a tune when that side of it as well and getting your partner on board it's much more than just hey i support you but you need to make sure that you can bring it in from an emotional and mental level as as well yeah they say foreplay is like for women it's like 80 percent <laughs> mental 20 percent physical <laughs> <laughs> well i you know i totally understand that it, you know and and i listened to esther perel and you know he talks about like how many different facets of intimacy right it's that like you have intellectual intimacy on top of the physical one and in yeah. getting on top of the you know like what my motivations are can we be in sync do you understand what's going on in my mind and and you just trying to get to know that space like like you know what is like making my clock tick you know i think that is like such a big part of like uh yeah relationships or supportive relationships and they may healthy, not always understand healthy relationships yeah healthy, <laughs> relationships. healthy supportive relationships so we're talking about <laughs> fitness having a healthy real estate portfolio and having a healthy marriage you need a well-balanced life and Tracy, <laughs> the overachiever is like triple threat she hit all she hits all three <laughs> I'm so I'm so working on it every day, guys. Um, but to like answer your second question around like how do we even get there? Um, 
I think getting him to that mindset was definitely difficult, right? It's like, it's easy when you're just saying it and you're just explaining it now, but so his background is he's in law enforcement and in that field. And for those who are listening and can relate, like they're naturally wired to put others in their community community before themselves, like even their own life. And mm. whether even if you're not naturally wired to do that, you're trained to do that as like a police officer. So um, working on that mindset was something that I really had to work with him on because when I dove into this world of real estate investing, it wasn't just like, hey, I'm going to go buy a couple of homes and we're going to let it sit and we're going to have some cash flow. But it's really this mindset of it's more than that. It's like, how do we get the return on our time and our freedom? So now we're pivoting this conversation in our marriage from like working for others and building wealth to how do we work for ourselves and serve ourselves so that we can build this vision for our family and our family now and also the family that we, we will make together in the future. Um, and I think I was able to do that by just dragging him along to meetups like intentionally like blasting up mm -hmm. podcasts from like Grant Cardone inspirational podcast. Like literally I'll be on my phone and I'll just like blast it up on like high volume just so he could just like walk by and listen and take some snippets out of it. And then I would like intentionally just leave like rich dad, poor dad books, like all around the house, like highlight stuff, flip it open the book and just put it right there on like the dinner table, you know? And over time, um, he started to pick up a lot of like the cube, like, okay, look, now I understand it's more than just like buying homes and acquiring it. But I think the tipping point that really like fueled and inspired him and really took us to that next level was like, I just, it was, it was around December and I was like, Hey, like, let's do a vision and goal setting session. And so what I did that day was I booked an entire day. I was like, Hey, we're going to meet on Friday. We're going to have some coffee. We're going to buy some pastries. It's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. And we're going to spend that whole day. We're going to turn off all of our phones and we're going to set a one year vision and a five year vision. And within that vision, let's talk about everything that's important to us. And at that time, and even today, it's our assets. It's our relationship with family, friends, ourself, and it's our health and it's our self-improvement. So those four buckets, we then aligned like habits and goals associated to it. And every quarter now we actually have a quarterly meeting and we would meet and we would say hey like every day all the habits that i've done up to this quarter has accumulated to these goals or these progress that we've achieved and ultimately the end goal here is that after every quarter we want to be able to say every action and every motion that we put into place within this last three months is putting us closer to that one vision in that that one year versus like that five year vision. And I think what he started to realize was like our five year vision, which is like our one year vision even, which was how do we sponsor trips internationally for our family, right? And that like for me, I'm a big family person. He is too. Our goal is to travel with our family whenever we want to. And I think what he realized was like, there's no way that we can sponsor trips for our huge family just on one income stream and where we are at today. So that's when his wheel started spinning. He was like, okay, like I actually need a side hustle. I need to build out a business. And like, how do I balance my time as a law enforcement officer and do all these other things so that we can get there? And very similar to myself too. And I think that's when he started to get like, okay, like it's not about just like having a job and getting income from it, but it's really about working towards his vision and then working backwards and how we achieve it. Um, and we're proud to say, like, just last month, we, sorry, two weeks ago, we came back from Japan and Korea, and we actually opened up the invite to our parents, and we're like, hey, like, we want to get you guys a trip, like, come on over to Asia with us, and unfortunately, my parents couldn't make it due to timing, but we were able to fly his mom out, and she enjoyed the trip with us, and it was incredible, and we hope to continue to do that, like, every single year with our family. Mm, that's oh, man, so they cute. Gave me literal chills. And I'm like <laughs> tearing up a little bit. Period's oh. <laughs> coming. <laughs> Hey, we're going to take a little break. But in the meantime, here's a shameless plug for one of our amazing sponsors. Dr. Hua Win and her husband, Dr. Jaime Gonzalez, both optometrists by trade and owners of multiple multi-million dollar optometry practices in the Dallas area, founded Black Steel Investment Group with a passion to invest to impact. 
With the foundation forged on three pillars, integrity, community, and legacy, they put their investors at the forefront of everything they do. The couple are both seasoned, full-time, multifamily investors, syndicators, and asset managers who, together with their investors, have invested in over 6,900 units as general and or limited partners in Texas, Arizona, Florida, and the Carolinas, with total assets valued at over $480 million. Juan and Jaime are always working to find new investment opportunities for their investors. The couple enjoys traveling the world for delicious food and interesting cultures with their eight-year-old daughter, Athena, and have a puppy named Coco Ali. Now on to the show. I love, I love that, like, okay, well, my husband says all the time, too, he's like, treat your relationship. He's always like, I want to treat our relationship like a business. <laughs> I'm like, but it's true. I was like, when you started saying, like, we meet quarterly, I'm like, that is literally what we do all the time, too. It's like our relationships like at, like what's that word like the term agile scrum <laughs> like we have like what did you know what are 2023 goals what happened what you like from our relationship this past month what did you not like what could you change <laughs> i was like it's i love it it's exhausting i will say it's exhausting and but it's so worth worth it i think to be yeah. consistently talking in line like this with your partner because it really does affect every aspect of your life right i think in like the beginning of my own marriage which is i think we started i mean we got married about maybe the same time but you know like all the all all of your um i think someone said to me like all of your happiness and all of your misery is going to come from one single person right yeah. and it always it starts with your marriage it doesn't matter if like what kind of problem you have you have a business problem you have like a health problem you should start with your marriage and the reason why is because there's this one single person that is affecting so many different facets of your life, right? That is, it's sort of like the yeah. keystone, right? And so I love that, that, you know, you're constantly in check and constantly in tune with that and getting off to a great start. I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't know. I'm also on a start. <laughs> it sounds like you're getting on a start, a great start. <laughs> so, yeah. I love that. That's love a that. found. It's a foundational. You know, if you having that strong partnership is a foundational thing, and it's a launching point for stuff. But Anita, I want to go on a side anecdote. Uh, so Anita's husband Will is very big on measuring performance metrics. Mm -hmm. So during the Dallas trip, what did he tell? How did he rate your guys's marriage when we were in the thick of <laughs> planning that Dallas trip? Out of oh ten, what score did he give you? I got a four. <laughs> I got a four out of ten. <laughs> it, he said, "Yeah, I got a four out of a ten. It was it was definitely a rough time for doing like. <laughs> I was so stressed with Tiffany. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it went out. So you know, my marriage. You know, we, we almost yeah. had a divorce. This is our other. This yeah, me oh, and Anita are basically work married. We're work wives. You know, Anita, I rated our marriage during the Dallas trip a two out of ten. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what oh, would yeah. make what would make the marriage a ten? I'm kidding. Like, how would you guys define a ten? Oh, you're like fucking we, on we, unicorns. We, <laughs> Sorry, we have to make this we're, podcast. We're, we're always we're always tapering on like seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> ten doesn't exist, but we can make place. the event part, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think a ten I, for I, us would. Yeah, go ahead and you know yeah. what you're gonna say. I mean, I would be happy to be at. I think perfect position is an aid right you still have something to work for a little bit like i think kind of where Ooh. happiness sits you know I like, like you have you have some place to work towards you have still some things to work on but you're generally happy and and feeling fulfilled and i think that's what i aim for with all my relationships including my work wife tiffany oh so. i need mean, you know what i love all right so you know what you're right because a perfect 10 would, would mean that we plateaued, right? If we hit a perfect 10, we'd be like, what's next? You're and Anita does all the time, like, yeah, when we, when we get too comfortable, Anita's like, we need to move on to the next thing. Like she, she's like, we, if we do one, if we hit one thing out of the park, Anita's like, all right, what's the next thing? And I'm like, I'm not ready to get stressed out again. Can you give me like a week? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm listening to my body and we need a break. <laughs> I love this relationship that you two have and also the fact that you brought up the plateau again like now it's inspiring me it's like how come I don't have a work wife like I need a work wife too welcome to the sorority Tracy the, ser yeah. the, the sister, sister sisterhood. Right. yeah right. 
<laughs> so <laughs> many, so many sister wives to choose from. Just go to the next sorority, <laughs> <laughs> sorority trip that we have going. On. You'll find your work wife there. I bet I will. I, I'm so excited to make the next one. I'm. I was so bummed I missed the one in Dallas. Yeah. Oh okay, God, so, so fun. I want to hear right. top tips for setting goals. Top three tips. Ooh, top three tips. I would say if you were to take anything away from this podcast, go read Atomic Habits by James Clear because one of my top tips for setting goals is don't set a goal, set an identity and align habits to it. And the reason why I say that is because whenever we set goals, it's very out of reach at the moment, right? Like you're not going to, I'm not going to wake up the next day and become like a multi-billionaire, like passive, you know, real estate investor. But if I align habits to it, and if I'm setting the identity of like, Hey, I want to become a real estate investor. Great. Now it sets in play this motion of like, okay, how do I align habits and daily next steps in order to help me get there? And it could be as simple as start analyzing three, seven, five, whatever it is, properties a day. Um, go and attend one meetup every single week and meet someone new every single week or every single month, whatever that might be. Um, the second tip I would say is, and this is from the great Grant Cardone. I mentioned him a couple of times, as you can tell, he's my idol, um, is whatever your goal is, like 10 exit. And so, for example, if your goal is to make 100K in passive income through real estate investing, make it a million. Because if you're going to, because then it's like you start to train your mind to think bigger. But also, if you 10X a 100K goal and you make and you land 500K in passive income, I don't think you're going to be crying anytime soon. <laughs> like maybe tears of happiness, right? Um, so shoot for the freaking planet and just land on the stars. Um, and the last tip here is like set your vision and track your habits with your partner. We kind of talked about this with my husband, Lawrence, right? Um, if you don't have a significant other, find someone who's a really close friend, someone that you trust and track those habits daily. Make it one of the first things you do every single morning um, and just get it done. It takes like a quick five minutes of like, hey, these are my habits today. This is what I'm going to do. And just check it off at the end of the day. And that just kind of gives you the sense of like fulfillment of like, wow, like I did it. And it inspires you to keep doing it. Oh my God. Can I add, can I add a fourth? Can oh I my God. Fourth? Yeah, of course. Of course. And I think this is just like so monumental, like also set time because anytime that someone comes to me and they're like, Hey, like I want to set this goal. And then I meet with them the next time. I'm like, Hey, like I actually didn't hit it because I didn't have time. That's like the number one reason why people just don't achieve it. Um, set a time block and make it non-negotiable. Like literally don't touch your phone. Don't let anybody disturb you. Whatever that time block is dedicated to whatever tasks that you want to align or have accomplished. So like, for example, for me, it's like my time block is 4.30 in the morning to 8 a.m. No one bothers me. My husband, my dog knows not to even look at me. That is my workout, my reading time, my getting up to speed on real estate, everything that I need to do. And after 8 a.m., great. Let's start with a W-2 and do everything else. So don't forget to take care of yourself and serve yourself first thing in the morning and do what you need to do. I love that. I love the self-care aspect. I love how your husband is almost like your gym buddy. He is your gym. <laughs> like, look at all the fitness analogies happening here. Um, and I, and I love that you read it. You brought up Atomic Habits. I love that book. And I think Anita, you read it too, right? We that was like on our reading list together. And we don't have a reading list together. We just happen to read it. <laughs> I, I make it sound like we're like, oh, that's we're such an ideal idyllic couple. Like, oh, we have a reading list together, and then we talk about it. <laughs> we don't do that. Um, but what I love about Atomic Habits is I think he had a chapter where it's like when you do your task, you stack them. Right. Yeah. And and I think you having that uh, having a dedicated time block to just stack all those tasks, it's like a compound movement when, to bring it back to lifting. Right. You do a squat and you do a curl at the same time. And within that time frame, you're activating different muscle groups and you're like more parts of your body is getting workout. And that goes back to what you said earlier, Tracy, which is like work smarter, not harder. You only have a finite amount of time to do things. So how do we maximize our yeah. time? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, I remember know. reading an article too about um, like the a Forbes article about millionaires don't use to-do lists. They use, they use time blocking. <laughs> read this. I think it was a long time ago, yeah. but totally. I mean, I, I totally agree with that. Okay. So how top three tips for maintaining these goals? Ooh, or maintaining. Four. I think that's that's the harder part of it, right? It's like, cool, like you could set all the habits and write in all the goals you want, but maintaining it. Um, the first is I would say be consistent. So on days that just suck, just show up. Like you want to get to a place where if you're not doing it, it feels weird. Like for those who are consistently working out, like on recovery days for me, like I don't know what to do with myself. I'm just like sitting here. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm resting, which is great. Um, but like, on days where it's just hard and like it freaking sucks and you have other things going on, like just show up anyways, because really that growth happens when you're stretching and you're being most uncomfortable. Um, and you know, on days, and I remember when I started analyzing deals, like it got to the point where it's like, I'm so sick of seeing these homes and like none of these deals make sense. I want to give up. And I've had like those moments where I'm just like, dude, like this, this doesn't work. Numbers doesn't work but you just keep doing it. And once you close on that first, second, third property, like you're never going to regret and be like, wow, like I regret flexing that muscle and building that muscle up to analyze so many deals at the point where now I know what is worth spending time on and what is not. Um, the second tip I would say for maintaining those goals would be to honor the commitment to yourself. And I think every time that you're setting a goal or you're telling yourself you're going to do something, like do it. Um, people just don't realize that committing to yourself and especially with your goals and with your habits, like it is a form of self-respect. And just like you make commitment to others, we follow through. Don't give yourself the short end of the stick and give yourself excuses. Just follow through with that commitment and give yourself the respect that you know that you deserve. The third one is, again, it goes back to setting that non-negotiable time. I cannot stress this enough. It doesn't have to be in the morning. It doesn't, you know, whatever it is, if you're not a morning person, do it after work. Um, just find that time block. And for those with family, I get it. It's so difficult and it's so hard. Um, that time block doesn't have to be two or three hours. It could even be an hour. And that hour can be broken down to, let me just read one chapter today. Let me just listen to the first 10 minutes of this podcast. And if I'm commuting, I can listen to the rest of it. Um, if it's important enough to you, you will make it work and you will find the time. So do that time block. I love that. And that time blocking, it's literally like boundary setting, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's being very protective of your time and your energy. And what's so interesting is like, I don't know if this has been your experience growing up like in an Asian immigrant household, but mm -hmm. I almost feel like there's you you don't there's no boundaries. <laughs> there's no boundaries with your parents, like zero bound. So that that was like an, a learning that I had to get as an adult and going to therapy. Hey, all right. So maybe personal question. Do you go to therapy, Tracy? It's like a personal trainer for your brain. So do you, do you go to therapy for yourself? And do you do marriage counseling? You, if you don't want to answer, that's fine. But I'm just curious, like, no, no, those are questions. So for myself, I don't go to therapy. Um, for my marriage with Lawrence, we did attend a couple of like marriage counseling and therapy. Um, and that was life-changing. I mean, it helped our marriage in so many ways because I feel like a lot of times when people think about like counseling, they automatically gravitate to like, oh, like something's wrong with you or something's wrong with your marriage. You need help. But like one, I just want to put it out there. There's nothing wrong asking for help if you ever need it. And also two, counseling is one of the best therapy that you can get because you can have an expert, like literally someone who has spent their life dedicated to this field to help you self-improve not only yourself, but one of the most important relationships, like sign me up any time of the day, right? And a lot of these therapy sessions, we're not even talking about like issues about our marriage. We're talking about like, hey, how do we improve this part? Or like, hey, how do we get better? What should we be thinking about in terms of like, five years, 10 years from now, what happens when we have kids, right? It's just kind of like this thing where it's like you're brainstorming with other folks that are much more ex like more of an expert in the field than you are. Um, Cause at the end of the day, I think we also have like group thinking syndrome where it's like, if it's just you and your partner, you always kind of have the same thoughts. It's like, how do you bring in a third party with like a different perspective? 
I have so yeah, much to say by about third party. Thing. Yeah, we mean therapist, not a third third party. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. That an open <laughs> don't bring in that third party, people. Keep it between you two, but bring in that therapist. <laughs> Right. I, I have so much to say about that. I mean, actually, I mean, my, my husband and I, we have a, a couples counselor, a therapist that we don't use all the time. It's like we bring her in at once a quarter. We like kind of do some fine tuning. And then sometimes when shit hits a fan, we call her and be like, all right, we need a coat. We need like a we need a referee between us. Because sometimes we just kind of get out of her head. And and sometimes she just talks to my husband alone. I think what's really and, and what you said is on point is like you have an expert that just like not like not only can they ask the right questions, but they can synthesize all of the things that you're you're trying to get out and then help you synthesize it in a way that is helpful for you to communicate to your to your partner, right? Who does not have a degree degree in like, you know, any of this stuff. All you all they hear is like just rambling while you're trying to figure it out. And then it it's sort of like and, and so like having a therapist is like having like someone just like kind of cut to the cut to the chase and then yeah. ask like those right questions about what those like those underlying things really are about and so i'm such a proponent not sure how to deal, deal with goals but i think this is such a proponent no, it does. It does because that's your partner to help you hit those goals if yeah. i think I, I think i heard somewhere where the most important uh thing that a woman can do is picking the right partner for her life because for, for I feel like the impact for a woman is much more significant than it is for a man, especially in the world that we live in, right? If a woman doesn't have a good partner, it basically ruins her life. Like he's just gonna bring you down to his level. Um, so you really need to find someone who is in alignment with your values. And I feel like, you know, both Tracy and Anita, my conversations with you guys, you guys sound you guys have great husbands, great supportive partners. And I think as your girlfriend, it's good to have like relationship goals, ha! relationship goals, AF. And so, um, cause this episode is about goals. Anita's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> and he has this like, like blank face. <laughs> no, to me, it's just like more like, it's that conversation of like women needing to choose their like partners. <laughs> like that's the most important thing. And I'm like, I don't know. I've like heard that from, I don't know. Like, I've I mean, been you can stay single all the time. and be single and have your peace. But if you're, if you are gonna partner up, don't pick a shitty one. Like women can, and women can work. Like, I, let me clarify what I said, guys, before anybody gets <laughs> mad at me on the podcast. You can be single and ready to mingle and kill it, right? You can be the rich auntie. That's fine. Like you do you, girl. But yeah. I'm saying for those who choose to partner up, don't pick a shitty partner because that's gonna ruin your life. All right, pick a good one. Well, right, and then your saying. priority is not picking a partner. Like your, I mean, your whole ambition of a woman yeah. is not to yeah. have a partner. That's not what I meant, guys. Like that's, yeah, not, that's, not, that's not, not what I one. meant. I just said you have, <laughs> you have life path. If you're gonna do that one, pick pick a good partner. <laughs> and to add to women empowerment as well, where it's like, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna relate this back to real estate, where it's like, don't make a deal work if it just doesn't work. You know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, for, for example, if you find a property, you locate it during inspection, there's just no way this foundation could ever get fixed. And it just does not work with the numbers that you have in mind. It's okay to walk away, move on, take it as a learning. And now you know where to base your criteria to look for the next one, tying it back to relationships, right? You can go to counseling therapy and you know, have these conversations with your partner, but ultimately we continue to grow and evolve as human beings, even if we're married or not, we will change. I will be a very different person this time next year, very similar to your partner. And at some point, if that alignment and how you guys evolve as people no longer align, it is okay. It's okay to find partners elsewhere, or it's okay to just continue on the journey yourself and remain as friends. Right. Don't force anything, whether it's a deal, whether it's a relationship. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's amazing. I think, I think. Are we at time, Anita? Are we at time? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think we're at time. It was just too good chatting, so it just kind of went on. So. So fun. I love it. Crazy. Is that me? No. That's who's whose alarm is that? No. Was that me? <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um. That was me. Uh. Sorry about that.
this was an amazing tracy thank you so much for all the amazing advice i feel like in in, in the idea of tune-ups i would love to have tracy back on the show throughout the year so we can all just check in with each other like girlfriends just like meeting up for a digital like brunch lunch and, and you know i love this i think that we should definitely do that anita so let's book it uh wow. thanks tracy for all the amazing advice thank i hope you. this helps all our listeners get a little jump start on how to keep their real estate plans in motion uh tracy if our listeners want to find you how can they do so absolutely well anita tiffany thank you so much for having me and pod squatters thank you for tuning in it was such an honor to be here um if you ever want to find me i am very active on the subtle asian real estate group um search my name on facebook send me a message happy to help support in any way that i can or if you're on instagram i'm also there find me at tracy underscore underscore tr and then the number four um promise i am going to create a real estate handle very shortly but for now that's my personal account add me find me love to connect awesome thank, thank you. you so much tracy thank you thanks tiffany thanks anita Thank you for tuning in to the Sarah Ladies podcast hosted by Anita Wong and Tiffany Lee. Special thanks to Subtle Asian Real Estate, LLC, our parent company. If you enjoyed our show, please leave us a review or follow Sarah Ladies on Spotify and Instagram at Subtle Real Estate. You can also click on our show notes to subscribe to our newsletters to stay on top of our news and upcoming events. Until next time, pod squatters. <laughs>